Hey everyone, wanted to talk today about a piece of equipment that's called a video routing switcher. So this is one of those things that people don't tend to get introduced to until they've been in video for at least a little while. But it's a very handy piece of equipment and a couple years ago I actually did a video explaining this is my favorite piece of equipment that I have uh, that I use for doing video production. Uh, but anyway, so it's a piece of equipment that allows you to reroute video signals where you want. There's a lot of cool things you can do with that based on the idea of being able to send any signal you want any to any destination. So what you're actually seeing on screen right now is a couple of the video routing switchers that I have here in my trailer. I have a couple of the Smart Video Hub 40x40 40 40, uh, models here in my trailer from Blackmagic Design. Each one of those has 40 inputs and 40 outputs. And essentially what these things allow you to do is to send any video source from any source to any destination. So if I want to take a camera and send it to my switcher, I can do that. Or I can take that same camera, send it to a recorder, video recorder, like a hyperdeck. Uh, if I want to send it to a monitor, I can do that all without having to change any cabling. So essentially you connect up all your video sources to inputs on your routing switcher, and then you connect all the, the destination devices to the outputs on your routing switcher, and then you're able to use the either the front panel interface if it has one or go through a piece of, piece of software or a web browser in order to reroute those video signals to anywhere that you want. The part of the beauty of this is that you can send any video source to as many destinations as you want. So you're not limited uh, on a one-to-one -one basis like you would be if you were connecting up cables. Say for example you connect up a camera to a video input on your switcher that's the only place you can send that without sending it through something like a distribution amplifier or through a video routing switcher. So having that routing switcher allows you to distribute that destination or that video to as many destinations as you want. So you could be sending that camera to your switcher, to a recorder, and to a monitor all at the same time without having to repatch any cabling. Just a matter of navigating the device's interface. Here are three models of video routing switchers from Blackmagic Design. The one there on the bottom, the Smart Video Hub 40x40, is the one that I have here in my, in my trailer. Two of them, if you want to be more precise. And, like I say, these allow you to take any video source and send it to any destination as you please. So, and the, the other nice thing about this particular one is it's got, got a nice big screen on there, so you can actually see what those video signals are, you're not just guessing. Now, Pretty much all of these things will have some sort of interface on that allows you to apply labels to your devices so you know that input one comes from camera one and output one goes to switch or input one, that kind of thing. So you're not just having to remember arbitrary numbers, you're actually able to use names in order to make those routes uh, make, and make that routing a little bit easier. So but anyway, yeah, so this is the Smart Video Hub for Blackmagic Design. These come in models for, uh, 20, uh, 12 by 12, 20 by 20, and 40 by 40. And what that means is it has 12 inputs, and 12 outputs, 20 by 20, obviously 20 inputs, 20 outputs, and then same thing with 40 by 40, but allows you to reroute the signals in, in any way you want. And those signals can be any format that the device supports. In the case of the Smart Video Hub, uh, non-12G models, that means SDI video up to 6 gig, so up to uh, 4K at up to 30 frames per second. And that's the model I have here in my trailer. And there you go. So that, there's kind of a picture of the back. So a heck of a lot of connections in there. Uh, again, 40 inputs, 40 outputs on this thing. They also have reference inputs on some of the higher end models, which allows you to make sure that that transition from one source to another happens in sync with some of those video sources. If you happen to be working in a gen locked environment, so you're able to cut between from one source to another without causing a glitch. It actually does it between frames instead of in the middle of a frame. Uh, Require, it does require an environment that actually is using Genlock, though, in order to do that. But, uh, so yeah, it's a pretty, pretty cool idea. It's like being able to reroute any signal from any place to any other place. In addition to that, Blackmagic also makes these universal video hubs. These only go up to 3 gig SDI, so only up to 1080p at, at uh, 60 frames per second. But you can get them on larger sizes, so they have 72 by 72 or 288 by 288, and they're actually modular, so you buy just the cards that you need in order to build the capabilities that you need. So whereas the Smart Video Hub only supports SDI, you can actually do uh, optical fiber on these as well. Um, so you've got some other choices in terms of the signaling type that you want to have. But again, the big downside to this this particular one, for me at least, would be 
that it only supports 1080p. It won't do 4K signaling. Uh, there you go. That's kind of that's one of their fully populated ones there on the right. So 288 inputs, 288 outputs. So any of those inputs can go to any output at any time. Very 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 cool functionality there. All right. So let's we'll take a look at one from AJA. This is the Kumo 6464, uh, and it's also this is a 12 gig SDI model. So this can do 4K at up to 60 frames per second, and 64 inputs and 64 outputs. So. So yeah, there's that. Now let me just actually show you a way that I use these here in my trailer. So this is the software interface for one of the two smart video hubs that I have here in my trailer. This is one that I call my trailer smart video hub, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but this is the one that's connected to all the video sources that are video sources and destinations that are permanent in the trailer. So all of the monitors that you see around me, the computers that are here in the trailer, uh, those things all are connected to my first video hub. And as we go through some, some of the list here, we can see what, what, I, what I mean by that. So like C out 8 output right here is com right, currently coming from computer 1B. So the first of the four computers that I have in here, uh, that's the second output, so output B. And all I have to do to, to route that is choose that in the list. And then if we go down a little bit, I've got computer 2B and 3B going to outputs 9 and 10 respectively and then 11 and 12 coming from the server computer that I have in here and that's uh, A and B uh, and there's also a C that's not currently routed but I just let you see so I'm going to scroll down to the bottom I know you won't see this as I'm selecting it but if I choose this is output 36 which corresponds to the monitor that's just directly behind me and we're currently that's outputting desktop A from my server computer here and if I wanted to have that come from the camera that's shooting right now, all I have to do is choose that from the list and click and boom, within a cut, within just a matter of a second or so, that video source is now sent to that monitor. And I can send that to all the all the monitors here in the trailer. So if I was to take and go to uh, the same video source going to the front small center, which is the one that's right here, so I click the same thing there. Bingo, now we've got that same video source going to that monitor as well. So just by selecting some options in a menu, I'm able to reroute those signals in any way that I need to. I know a lot of people are gonna think 40 by 40 is an awful lot. When would, I, when, would, when would I ever need more than that? Well, in the case of here, what I have here in my trailer, I could actually get away with three of them. I currently have two and I have more video sources than that. It adds up really, really fast. So every computer that I have here in the trailer has outputs and I also have uh, connections to camera so the camera that I use here for YouTube and then overhead camera and then there's a second overhead camera that I don't use very often here that's just three more sources that are that are available here and then I have some video sources that are being created in the audio booth and uh, external connections on the outside of the trailer that come in uh, and allow me to connect to cameras locally at the trailer then of course I've got my fiber optic connections that come in from remotely as well and those are routed through my video video routing switchers as well so that gives me a lot of uh, functionality, a lot of possibilities that I might not necessarily have otherwise. So one of the main reasons I, I use this here in the trailer is if I need to change the functionality of a, one of the particular desk positions here that's in the trailer. For Normally where I'm sitting right now is the technical director, but sometimes I also need to be able to run audio from here. So in that case, I might reroute the video output of the computer that's in the audio booth up here to the front as well or if we need to have somebody operating instant replay um, I can't do it from this desk for whatever reason I can reroute that computer to any of the other desks that are here in the trailer and that's done completely through software and I don't have to touch any single cables for that let me just kind of go through a handful of some of the outputs so you can kind of better understand what's going on here so see out basically that means camera out so I've got camera outputs 5 through 12 here uh, one through four are part of my other one, which I'll get to here in a minute. And then I've got a bunch of outputs that go to Patch Bay, and I've shown a video about my Patch Bay here on this channel, so you can go back and watch that. And then I've got three destinations for the audio booth, so I have the main monitor in the audio booth, the one in the back, and then I have a scope, which allows me to monitor the quality of the audio signals. And then I have a four channel in and out so I'm able to t inject audio channels from my mixer into a video stream. So this is, this is kind of like uh, an effects loop. So what I would typically do with this, and I've talked about this before, is like if I need to add an, a, set, a different audio program on top of, or in place of 
one that's on a video signal, I can send the video signal over to the audio booth, use an audio to SDI adapter there, inject that audio into that stream, and then send that back to the routing switcher, and then send that to recorder or video encoder or whatever I need, whatever I need to do with that. So I don't have to repatch any cables in order to make that happen. And come down a little bit farther. I've got uh, five additional entries for my patch bay, my video patch bay. Intercom 2 is what goes out to camera operators who are operating cameras 5 through 8. I'll have an Ultra Studio device at the CG desk, which I know you can't see, but it's just off screen to my left here. And then I have my four replay recorders. Those are HyperDecks. So when I need to record isolated video feeds and going from, uh, into a HyperDeck, this is, this is how I route that. And then that's where I get into some of the other desks. So I have an output for my... Uh, Character graphics, CG position just to my left, and the desk that I'm sitting at right here, the replay monitor. And then I have some multi views that I use generically in order to send video, uh, multiple source sources of video onto some of the monitors. So I've got a number of those. And then the last five are the monitors that sit directly behind me. So I've got left, center, right on the bottom, and then top left and right above those. And so in that way, I'm able to reroute, send any signal that I want to any of those locations here within the trailer. Okay, so one of the cool ways that I could use this is take advantage of the fact that I have some multi-views here in the trailer and I can use those in order to send multiple video sources to a single monitor. So what I'm going to do here is take the monitor that's directly behind me and I'm going to send separate, four separate video sources to that. And if you watch on the right side of your screen there, you kind of see me actually doing this. So I'm going to use multi-view number three, which right now is actually connected to patch seven through ten so I'm going to be modifying the outputs for out modifying the video sources for outputs nine ten eleven and twelve so uh, before I do that though I'm going to actually put that multi view up on screen there so I'm going to scroll down to front small left is the video that I want to monitor that I want to change and then I'm going to change its source to multi view three so I'll click on that and there we go so now the output of multi view multi-view is now going to be on that monitor behind me. And then from within there, because each one of those four squares is coming from one of the routing switcher outputs, I can actually change those as well. So again, I'll scroll back up to where those are. So right now, position one is program feed. Now let's actually change that to the camera. And I, I know that I've got that routed on switcher external one, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. So you'll see in a second, it should be coming up. There we go. Yeah, so we've got switcher uh, this is camera one coming in from there, and then on the bottom left, input two, that's going to be switcher director one, so that is the multi view. Uh, I'm just going to leave that one as is, and then for number 11, I'm going to select the computer that I'm currently using, that's computer 3B. So I'll click on that, and you'll see that change in the upper right corner of that monitor. And then lastly, switcher director two, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that as is. So on that monitor that's behind me, camera is upper left, upper right is the computer that I'm using, lower left is the multi-view output number one for my switcher, and then the lower right is multi-view output two. And you saw me do this on a video here on my channel just a short time ago when I talked about what an ME is. And that's this is how I did it. I used one of these multi-views in order to do that, and I didn't have to change any cabling. It was just a matter of rerouting some of the video signals within the routing switcher configuration. Now, uh, I know there's people who are going to be wondering, so I'll very quickly select my other smart video hub. This is the one that's in my equipment rack that has my switcher in it, so the outputs of this one are going to my switcher. So if you notice, as I go down the right here, 1 through 14, those all go to the inputs on my switcher. And right now, camera 1 is coming from camera 13 input, which I have labeled YT1, which stands for YouTube 1, which is this camera. This is my YouTube camera. And so right now I have that YouTube camera going into input 1 of my switcher. And then I have external in 03 going to input 2, and that is overhead camera, which you're not seeing right now, but, it's, but it is actually live. It is active. So that camera is going there. Uh, camera 3, which is a fiber source, which I would normally use when I'm working for a client at a, at a venue. That's currently going to output 3, which right now doesn't have anything on it. Uh, so if you were looking at the multi-view behind me, you'd see that camera 3 is, is blank. 
Uh, camera 4 comes from a video converter. In this case, that is a Decimator uh, MDHX. Currently no video source on that as well. And then we come down to ATEM 5 and 6. Those are labeled camera 11 and 12, but those actually come from the other other routing switcher. So it's these are tie lines that go between those. Uh, and those are currently sourced to the server computer that I have here in the trailer that's displaying the DJP logo uh, on, on the desktop, uh, which you can see or could see earlier. So then come down a little bit farther and then external four input that is going to be camera number seven which is a third output of my of my server and then we come down a little bit farther ATEM input eight comes from quote unquote camera ten which in this case is actually routed from the computer that I'm working on right now so this video source that you're seeing on the right side of your screen that actually is uh, camera ATEM input number eight come down beyond that at, once you get past the ATEM inputs that's when I get into my HyperDeck Studios so I have three well, HyperDeck Studio minis on the first two and then a HyperDeck Studio Pro on the third of that group so 15, 16, and 17 on the outputs and then outputs 18, 19, and 20 go to decimator uh, MDHX's or in the case of the last one an MD Cross and so I'm able to send any video source to one of those converters do whatever conversion that I need and then send that back to it goes back to the routing switcher and that can be routed to any of the inputs or to a monitor or whatever I need it to be come down a little bit farther I've got 21 and 22 going to fiber optic converters uh, that are in my equipment as rack as well and then 23 through 32 these are external outputs these are tie lines that go back to the smart video hub that I have here in my trailer so that's how I'm able to exchange video between those between those two devices I have uh, lines to going connecting the two of them come down a little bit farther TN SDI to HDMI that's a Terranex SDI to HDMI converter that's how I actually add a color what to my device to my video before it goes out live and then the HDMI output of that goes into my video go so that's how I do my video encoding so that's ATEM program one is going into the Terranex SDI to HDMI converter where a lot gets applied to it and then it goes into the video go for encoding. Output 34 is the video feed that I send to camera operators. I say intercom on there, but that's actually this the return feed that's going back to camera operators. And this that's in this case that's coming from a, a multi-view, multi-view device. So I as I've mentioned many times on my channel. I take the first three cameras plus the program output, turn that into a quad view, and that's what I send to the camera operators so they can see what else the other camera operators are doing at the same time as what's going on with program. And that way they're better able to make sure that they're giving me a different sort of look and different shot than what the other camera operators are doing. So if one's on wide, another one can go to tight, another one can go to medium, and they're able to do that without me having to verbally tell them to do that so but I, I can change the video source going out to the cameras by selecting that here then I come down to engineering monitors one and two uh, director monitors one and two and those the uh, director monitors actually just go to the smart video hub where they can, can then be go, go to the other smart video hub where they can then be routed to any of the monitors here in the trailer and then I've got uh, a scope which you notice right here video source for that for, is right now you know, the preview coming out of the switcher and then LCD right is not, it, that's for a monitor that's in the back. Uh, that allows me to, to monitor uh, a particular video source when I'm back sitting back in the engineer booth for the trailer. So anyway, a uh, heck of a lot going on there. You know, I've got two smart video hubs and every single input and output is populated on each of those. And then I still have another 20 some odd sources besides that. So I'm one of these people that could absolutely use a 144 by 144 and then have that thing filled up. Uh, very quickly as well. But anyway, it's great having a smart video hub in order to allow me to reroute video signals as needed. Now, one thing that's kind of missing from the Black Magic is something that's called a salvo. That's where you're able to route a bunch of sources simultaneously. So you can say, I want cameras one, two, three, and four to go to uh, outputs one, three, five, seven, nine, or whatever. Uh, you can do that as a group when you have salvo functionality. Unfortunately, the smart video hubs don't do that. You get into some of the higher end units and they do. Uh, another thing that Blackmagic is missing is they don't have recorded scenes that you can save in order to say, this is, this is how I route 
I want to route signals for my YouTube channel, in my case, or this is how I want to route video signals for when I'm working for a client. It'd be very nice to be able to do that. We just basically say, save current setup as this, and then later recall that, uh, but they currently don't have that functionality. So uh, there's a way to do it through BitFocus Companion for those who are looking for it, uh, but I haven't, I'm not aware of any other software solutions that are currently capable, capable of doing that. I may be writing my own if I have some spare time. It's something I've really wanted to have. But anyway, so I'm definitely going on a little bit too long. But the yeah, basic idea here is that a smart video hub allows you to route any signal from any location to any other location without ever having to touch a cable. Uh, that not only makes your job easier, but it also saves wear and tear on your cables and your connectors. So you make a connection once, you just always leave it that way. And the other benefit, of course, is that you're able to distribute a single signal to multiple destinations. Instead of having, to, so instead of having to, to purchase a distribution amplifier, you're able to just basically go through an interface and say, I want this one camera to go to these six locations, and the device automatically takes care of splitting that signal, and distributing it to all those all locations simultaneously. So, anyway, that's going to do it for now. Uh, so, if you have any questions about this, please leave those in the comment section down below, or better yet, join us over on Discord at the address you're seeing down below. And we've got a pretty good pool of video professionals there that are very helpful. So if you have a question or you need help with something, you can certainly reach out to the community there as well. So if you happen to run your own video production business and you need some software to help you keep things organized, I have a website that I've created. It's called crewaxis.com, C-R-E-W-A-X-I-S.com, address there on the bottom of your screen. And it allows you to take control of all sorts of aspects of your business. So hiring crew, keeping track of your equipment, keeping track of your finances, billing your clients, all that kind of stuff. It's all there. Uh, it's, very, it's a very powerful site, and I have versions that are available for all the way from free, which will be free forever, uh, all the way up to enterprise-level plans with different capabilities and uh, different limitations that are opposed to different levels uh, of subscription that are available there. So be sure and check that out, and uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll uh, like what you see there. But anyway, that's going to do it. So thanks for watching, and have a fantastic day.